Hi folks, this is Tavia Sobian today. Today I'm going to talk about the new switch skills for the Great Sword in Monster Hunter Rise Sunrake, go over their strengths and weaknesses, and give you an idea about some of the best ways to use them. Yeah, so Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak added three new switch skills for the Great Sword, two of which can be described as real game changers for the weapon, with one of those actually opening up a new playstyle, or technically bringing back the original playstyle for Great Sword before sword charging was introduced. Anyway, here are the three new switch skills. Number one is the Search Slash Combo. This one is unlocked once you arrive at Elgato and talk to Master at Sushi. This is basically an alternative to the regular Charge Slash Combo that uses faster slashes. And then after that is the Strong Arm Stance. This one is unlocked after reaching Master Rank 4 and serves as a counter that uses two Wirebug stocks to deliver a powerful Charge Slash. It's basically an alternative to Hunting Edge and the Adamant Charge Slash. And then third on the list is the Backslide. This skill is also unlocked at Master Rank 4. And so this one is a quick dash that provides distance without sheathing your weapon, and so it basically serves as an alternative to the power sheath. Now let's go in depth with each one. Let's start off with how to use the Great Sword Surge Slash combo. Yeah, so the Surge Slash combo replaces the slower, more deliberate playstyle of the Charge Slash combo by using a quicker rush based style instead. It actually feels like a refined version of the original Great Sword playstyle in the first Monster Hunter game prior to the introduction of charging in Monster Hunter 2. First, let's take a quick look at the pros and cons of the Surge Slash combo, and this is based on my experience after using the Great Sword extensively. Yeah, so pros include faster slashes than the Charge Slash combo, a tendency to stagger monsters more frequently, the fact that its regular slashes can have either super armor or part breaker, and the fact that it also speeds up charging at the end of the combo string. As far as disadvantages, number one is that it makes you unable to charge during the first three slashes, and also makes you unable to tackle during those first three slashes as well. DPS is also lower overall compared to the charge slash combo, and then given how the search slash combo also makes you move forward, it makes it easier for you to overshoot your target. Also by hitting more frequently, it also means that your weapon loses sharpness faster. Now the easiest way to understand the search slash combo skill is by thinking of it as a five part combo. It starts out with a quick three-part combo that essentially replaces the first hit of the charge slash combo. It then ends with a two-part combo that's like the last two parts of the charge slash combo but with quicker charging, or at least it feels quicker to me. <laughs> and then you can also tackle during those last two slashes. Do keep in mind that the first three slashes, although quick, actually roots you for a long time without the benefit of being able to counter a monster with a tackle in case it decides to attack you so you can be vulnerable during that time. Fortunately, there are some ways to mitigate this, which I will talk more about later. Now let's go over the first three slashes that make up the initial part of the combo. By the way, I will be using PlayStation notations to avoid confusion, since even though the Switch and the Xbox style PC controllers use the same letters, those letters are actually reversed, so I've decided to just use PlayStation buttons. So depending on which button you press, you can actually do one of three slashes. The first is the Falling Slash, which is performed by pressing the Triangle button, and then you have the Vortex Slash, which is performed by using the Circle button, and then last but not least is the Rising Slash, which is performed by pressing the Triangle and Circle buttons at the same time. And yes, you can actually use any combination of these three slashes for your first three hits. This means that you can do the same slash three times in a row, or mix and match any combination of the three that you'd like. Ideally, you'll want to use the attack that fits the situation, or what you're trying to do. As such, it's important to know the differences between the three types of slashes first. Let me go through them in order. So the Falling Slash is a vertical strike that starts high and then ends low. This actually has pretty high reach and can hit the head of the training dummy. It also moves you forward, so it actually has a nice reach in front of you, even though it kind of looks short compared to a normal greatsword slash. But the fact that you move forward can also cause you to overshoot your target if you attack too close, which can typically happen when you're attacking, for example, a down monster's head or tail. Anyway, this is the fastest of the three slashes, allowing you to do the first three parts of the surge slash combo in around four seconds, compared to five seconds for rising slash, and then six seconds for vortex slash. It also does the most damage out of the three surge slashes, and that includes both DPS, 
and total overall damage. So basically, if a monster is downed and you want to do the most damage and also get to your charge slashes quicker, then just use Falling Slash. The Vortex Slash, on the other hand, is a horizontal circular strike that hits around you. This happens to be the slowest of the three slashes and also does the least damage overall. So if that's the case, then why do you want to use it? Well, besides being great for hitting those permabuffer bushes or small monsters that are swarming around you, the last two slashes of a Vortex Slash combo also have super armor. This makes it great for tanking enemy attacks while getting to your charge slashes. Note that in order to get super armor, it has to be the second or third consecutive vortex slash. So for example, if you do a falling slash first, followed by two vortex slashes as your initial three-part combo, the first vortex slash, despite being the second hit of the combo, will actually not have super armor. The third one, however, will have super armor since it's technically the second Vortex Slash in a row. On top of that, the Vortex Slash also has one more useful trait. See, while a Falling Slash, for example, has a fixed direction, you can actually change the direction of an attack performed after a Vortex Slash by up to 90 degrees. Yeah, so this is great against moving monsters or in case you need to adjust your aim. Note that it can get a little bit tougher to readjust your angle when using a Falling Slash after a Vortex Slash, just because the Falling Slash comes out really quick. On the other hand, if you do a Charge Slash or even a Rising Slash after a Vortex Slash, it's actually easier to get that 90 degree adjustment. Speaking of the Rising Slash, this is actually an upward strike that is great for hitting high targets. If you do a triple Rising Slash combo, the third slash actually hits twice and feels extra satisfying if you successfully use it to bring down an airborne monster. It actually also has an added Part Breaker modifier, which is great for softening monster body parts. So to summarize, if you want fast strikes with higher damage, use Falling Slash. And then if you want super armor or need to change the direction of your attack, then use Vortex Slash. And then if you want to break parts more easily, go ahead and use Rising Slash, especially the third part of the Rising Slash combo. And then as far as mitigating the loss of tackling during the first three slashes of your Surge Slash combo, I already mentioned using the Vortex Slash as a way to tank an enemy attack. And so another option besides that is to use switch skills such as the strong arm stance in order to counter an enemy attack mid combo or the backslide to reposition and then attack. Another way is to use a switch skill swap, which you can then transition into a swap evade or even tank an attack with reduced damage, particularly if you have the redirection skill equipped. And then last but not least is an oldie but goodie. You can just uh, roll. <laughs> now personally, I still mainly use the Charge Slash combo as my main style when using Greatsword, largely due to the better defensive options that I get with it, as well as the higher DPS. At the same time, Surge Slash combo is a great gateway to using the Greatsword, particularly for folks who don't like the slower, more methodical pace of Charge Slash Greatsword. It's also a totally different playstyle that adds another layer to Greatsword play, so it's actually quite fun once you get used to it. Now let's go to the next Switch skill which is the Greatsword Strongarm Stance. This is actually my favorite addition out of the three new Greatsword Switch skills. Yeah, so the Strongarm Stance actually replaces the Adamant Charge Slash and then provides Greatsword users a true counter. Yeah, so prior to this, your main options to quote-unquote counter an enemy attack actually involved either using Tackle or Guard Tackle, which are more like guard points than counters, or using a tanking move such as Rage Slash, which is more of a super armor type move. In comparison, the Greatsword Strongarm Stance is actually a true counter, and using it lets you respond with a Charge Slash right away, including an instant True Charge Slash, or TCS, if you trigger it while charging. Yeah, so I think the addition of Strong Arm Stance actually basically makes the Great Sword's already great enemy attack mitigation options even better. It essentially plugs a hole in the weapon's repertoire by giving you another window to counterattack an enemy move, including the ability to counter without having to wait till the last part of a combo, like you do with Rage Slash, or without having to enter a Charging Stance like you do with Tackling add its boosted damage, as well as significantly reducing the damage that you take when you counter an enemy move, and you have a really great skill to add to your arsenal. Yeah, so how do you perform a strong arm stance? Well, there are two ways. The basic way is by pressing the left shoulder trigger and then the triangle button. This will allow you to counter with a single charge strike if you successfully parry the enemy move. The second way, which is the one I prefer to use most of the time, is to hold the triangle button with your weapon and sheath in order to enter a charging stance. Then while charging, tap the left shoulder trigger, and you will perform a more powerful version of the strong arm stance that lets you do a true charge slash right away instead of just the single charge slash. Yeah, so when you factor in the damage boost, this is actually a pretty good move. 
By the way, in addition to using enemy attacks to trigger this version of the counter, you can also lay down a regular barrel bomb, charge your sword, and then tap the triangle button as soon as you start charging in order to perform the stronger counter as well. Yeah, so this tactic is really great against monsters that are downed, unable to move, tired, or even sleeping. Just watch out when playing with others online, especially against a smaller monster, as you can send your teammates flying with a bomb blast. By the way, one useful tip is that you can completely change the direction you're facing by pressing your left stick toward the desired direction prior to doing the counter. So for example, you can start your charge, press the left analog stick toward your back, and your hunter will actually do a 180 degree turn. This actually addresses a common problem for greatsword users, especially with the regular TCS, where a monster moves and then you find yourself facing the wrong direction, and then totally whiff your totally damaging attack. I mean, as I'd like to say, 0% of a strong attack is still 0%. <laughs> Paging Captain Obvious. <laughs> By the way, again, you can actually use the previously mentioned switch skill swap trick in order to cancel the recovery lag after doing a strong arm stance counter, and then use another action right away. And this can include a second strong arm counter if you have it equipped in both your red and blue scrolls. However, as great as the strong arm counter is, it has some glaring weaknesses. One is that it can only counter one hit. This means that if a monster does a two hit or a multi hit move, you are going to eat the attack after the first hit. Also, if a monster uses a rushing attack that covers a long distance, they'll end up moving past you and then will be out of your reach, even if you do a successful strong arm stance parry. And then the third weakness is that you can't use the strong arm stance to block a grabbing attack by a monster. Yeah, so if you try to counter a grab move, it's not going to work. <laughs> and this is something I learned the hard way from monsters such as Tetranodon, who proceeded to grab me out of my counter stance like shoppers grabbing a television at Walmart during Black Friday. Yeah, so this means that you pretty much need to be familiar with a monster and its moves in order to use strong arm stance properly. And then the third new switch skill is the Greatsword Backslide. So the backslide is an alternative to the power sheath and can be performed by pressing the left shoulder trigger and then the circle button. Now the backslide has two key differences from the power sheath. One is that you don't travel as far a distance, and there's a reason for that, which I'll get to later. And then the other is that you do not sheathe your sword after performing it, so you actually keep your greatsword out instead. This means that while both moves are basically used for repositioning, the power sheath is more conducive to breaking away from an enemy, or closing the distance to an enemy from afar thanks to its superior range and mobility. Backslide, on the other hand, is more for continuing the attack on an enemy, or even setting up a strong arm counter, since your sword is still active after the move, and you can start charging right away, provided you're not using surge slash combo. And then just in case you change your mind, you can still use it to disengage from an enemy by rolling at the end, though it still won't be as good as power sheath, as far as disengaging. Also note that the backslide lets you dash in the direction opposite to where you're facing, but you still end up facing the original direction you were facing at the end of the move, which I guess sounds kind of confusing. <laughs> I don't think I explained that pretty well. Yeah, so this can be confusing at first, but you just need to get used to it. For me, the easiest way I got used to it was by just pretty much facing the direction I want to attack toward before performing the move. Yeah, so just tap the direction stick toward where you want to be facing by the end of the move, and then you do the move, which gives you a little bit of distance, but you're still facing that same direction you started from. And like I said earlier, if you use this with surge slash combo, it means that you can't charge right after doing it. Yeah, so that means you'll just start doing your surge slash combo instead. As such, if you want to use it as a way to do a strong arm counter, just make sure that you're using the charge combo skill instead. I do kind of wish that they made this a move that you can access alongside power sheath without having to swap. Especially good for aggressive greatsword play if you want to keep putting the pressure on the opponent. It's just a bit tough to give up power sheath. Anyway, there you go. A quick rundown of the new switch skills for greatsword and how best to use them. Feel free to share your thoughts or even your own experiences or tips in the comment section as well. One of the best things about the Monster Hunter community after all is helping each other out. Once again, this is Tommy Asobi, and thank you for watching.